Today we're going to be talking about the perch dissection. The first thing we want to do is identify the anatomical landmarks. So this is going to be the anterior aspect. We've got the posterior aspect back here. The belly is going to be ventral and the back is going to be dorsal. With that in mind, let's go ahead and begin with the anterior aspect and identify some of the external structures. The first thing I want you to know, identify, is the mouth. And I'm going to open up the mouth for you, just like that. And you can see that it's a bit different than the lamprey. The lamprey did not have jaws. It was a jawless fish. This fish actually has movable jaws, and it's got a joint right here. We can see how the jaws can open up. The lower jaw is going to be called the mandible, and the upper jaw up here is going to be called the maxilla. And together they allow the fish to open its mouth wider. So if we actually had the mouth and we opened it up like this, the fish could open its mouth wider and then it could actually bite down harder. This is an evolutionary step forward for fish because many are predators. And you can imagine if you can open your mouth wider and bite down harder, you would be a more effective predator. So that's going to be the mouth. You can easily see both eyes. Here is one eye here, and we've got another eye on the other side. And between the eyes, and just a little anterior, we have an opening here and an opening here. These are the nostrils that allow the fish to actually smell. If we go more posterior, we see this bony covering right here. And I'm going to actually pull this back for us. I'm going to get my finger under there and pull that back. And you can see the gills. Those are all gills under here. And this bony covering that I'm pulling back is called the operculum. And its job is simply to protect those very delicate gills. Now, if I go, if I take the probe and I enter the fish's mouth, the probe can go in one of two areas. It can go straight back, in which case it would go into the stomach. That's where food would end up. Or, if the fish opens its mouth and lets water in, the water will actually come and it will come out. It will go over the gills. So I'm going to open this up. And you can see right there the probe is coming out where the gills are. And water would actually go over top of those gills and gas exchange would take place. So make sure you actually do that and see that for yourself. If we go a little bit further on the side here, we see a fin. There's one. And on the other side, I have the other one. So this fin, this fish has paired fins, which help it maneuver and kind of stabilize in the water a little bit better, actually a lot better, than a fish that only has a single fin down its back, like the lamprey. This is called a pectoral fin. Down here we have a set of paired fins called pelvic fins, and there they are. We've also got another fin here. This is going to be an anal fin because just anterior to it we do have an opening. We have an anterior opening right here which the probe is in. That's the anus. And just a little bit more posterior to it we have another opening right there which is the urogenital opening. Now as the name implies, uro, urinary tract, genital, that means the genital tract, and the genital is where, this is a male, this is where the sperm would actually come out. And the urine would actually come out. So that's called the urogenital opening. If we go more posterior, we actually see the caudal fin. And that is used for propulsion. Again, fish are going to move their fin back and forth from side to side, side to side. Unlike a mammal, which is up and down. Now if we look right here we see a very faint line going all the way across the side of the fish. This is the lateral line and it's used for vibration. We saw something similar to that in the lamprey. And the lateral line is on both sides, identify both sides. The very dorsal aspect of the fish, we see this anterior dorsal fin. Be careful with it, it's got a lot of sharp bone and then we'd have the very soft posterior dorsal fin which helps keep the fish upright. These are the parts of the external anatomy. 
At this point, we need to go ahead and actually begin our dissection. So when we dissect the perch, we need to cut in certain areas or we're going to destroy structures inside. So I'm actually going to begin cutting. I'm just going to go anterior to the anus, just a little bit anterior. I will start there and I will work my way across just to the side of this pelvic fin all the way up until I get to the bony operculum. And then again, I'm going to go where I started here, I'm going to go up to the lateral line and that's where I'm going to begin. I'm going to use that as my reference line. I'm going to start cutting there and I'm going to cut all the way across until I get to the bony operculum again. And then I'm actually going to cut a vertical line from where I started to where I started and another vertical line from where I started to where I started. At that point, you want to kind of get your fingers underneath and slowly start to peel back the wall of the fish. You want to peel it back slowly and not just tear it off because if you tear it off you're going to destroy a lot of good internal structures and that's what we actually want to look at here. So let's go ahead and start this. I'm going to bring this towards me a little bit. Again I want to start on the ventral aspect just a little anterior to the anus. I'm going to get the one blade in there and it can be a little tough to get started. Little snips will do the job and you do not want to go too deep. If you go too deep, you're going to end up destroying internal structures. So I'm very gently, I'm kind of cutting through here. I might, yep, there we go, I'm inside. And I'm going to continue to cut along the side. Try to keep your blade shallow. Keep going, keep going, and keep going. Now I'm going to go up to the lateral line in the same thing. Watch your hand here, you don't want to slip. Little snips in the beginning, I'm in. And very shallow, the swim bladder is under here, you don't want to cut it up. And you're just going to keep the blade as shallow as possible, cutting through that wall and you'll feel it. And I'm going to cut all the way up to the bony operculum. Now I'm going to make my vertical cuts right here and very gently I want this lower blade just under the wall of the fish. I do not want to dig into organs. And I'm going to continue. Once in a while a scale might come off. That is okay. And that is connected. Now I'm going to go all the way up here near the operculum and again I'm going to continue to cut up through here. I'm cutting anterior to this pectoral fin and there we go. So I now have that cut. Now I've got to get in here and you might want to try to get in there with the probe. I'm going to turn this around, try to do this. You might want to get in there with the probe and try to run the probe under here. I'm going to tr slowly pull this back with my fingers very gently and sometimes this can be a little a little difficult you can see the muscle in there. I'm slowly pulling this back, just getting my fingers under there. Be careful. Some of these fins can be a bit sharp. They've got some bones there, so you want to be careful with that. Get your fingers under there, and you're just slowly peeling this back, peeling this back. Try not to tear. You don't want big tears. And I'm going to work my way in there. Periodically, you might have to get in there with a pair of scissors and do a little bit of additional cutting just to free things up a little bit more. I'm going to go in there and cut just a little bit more. Occasionally, you'll be cutting through some of the ribs. I'm going to turn this around for a minute. And there we go. So I removed the outer wall of the fish. You can see I cut into that just a little bit. Let's go ahead and identify some of the organs in here. So I remove that outer wall and before I get too much further you can see right here this is the swim bladder. It's like a balloon. I'm going to lift this up a little bit. You can actually see in there that was torn away a little bit but it's this balloon in here 
That is the swim bladder. That is actually used for buoyancy. They will inflate that or deflate that depending on whether they want to go up or down in the water column. This is going to be the gonad. This is a male, so that would be the testes. The male actually has two testes, so if I remove this, and I gently remove that because it's very soft tissue, I can see another one down below. The female only has one. She has one ovary, and typically there's a lot of eggs in it. I'm going to let out some of that dissection fluid, and this we can see this a little clear. Again, you can see that swim bladder right there, this whole structure, this is all the swim bladder. And then we can see some of the other organs. The next organ I'm going to come upon is this guy right here. This organ, this structure, is the liver. So that's the liver. And I'm going to begin to free stuff up just a little bit. You can see right there, you can see sort of a grayish structure right here. That's going to be the spleen. And then down below, I'm going to get my probe under that. That's going to be the intestine. So I just want to find those. Those are some landmarks. If I go up here, the very top, inside, or the swim bladder is right here, you can see this sort of brown, darkish streak along the dorsal aspect. That is going to be the kidney. And the kidney actually comes down. And if we follow it down, we're actually going to get to a small bladder. We'll see if we can get to that in a minute. I just want to confirm that that is the intestine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this probe and I'm actually going to put it into the anus just a little bit and you can see that, you can feel that the probe right there is inside the intestine. And that's how you find your way around. Sometimes you've got to go in some of these spaces and uh, see where it takes you. The other space, if I go in there, I'm going to go up into the bladder. So I'm actually going to, we'll see if we can clear this out in a little bit. There's some more of the gonad there. All right, let's go ahead and take a look. This is the operculum right there. And the next thing I want to do is cut away a little bit of this tissue through here. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut this operculum off. So I'm going to open it up a little bit. And I'm going to get in here with my scissors carefully. I just want to cut the operculum off. I don't want to damage the gills at all, so be careful. And I'm going to cut that operculum off. And there we go. So this is the operculum. I just cut that away. And we can begin to see the different gill arches. There's one. We've got another one, two, three. And if I pull these back, you can see some little, it look like little teeth in there. Those are the gill rakers. So these structures right here, these little teeth-like structures, are the gill rakers. They actually separate the gills so that the water can move effectively between the gills and we can oxygenate. Now let's go ahead and I'm going to cut some of this tissue away right here. And very gently, again, you don't want to go too deep because you'll begin to destroy structures. So you want to go very gently, not too deep. And we're going to begin to pull some of this tissue away. I'm going to turn that around and face me so I can get at it. And there we go. Now, if we look inside here, we're going to have the heart. And there it is right there. If we open this up enough, we can begin to visualize the heart. You can see it right there. There is the heart. Right there, I've actually cut it a little bit. It would have been right here. So that's the heart. We want to identify that. This is all liver right here. This whole thing is going to be liver. So the next thing you want to do is remove that liver carefully, gently, 
just kind of get your fingers in there and remove that liver ever so gently. So there we go. And now we've actually opened this up. This is all going at again. We've actually opened this up and we can see the stomach. I can see the stomach right here. This is all stomach. And if I follow that stomach anteriorly, I'm going to get in here, I'm going to open this up a little bit more. You can see where the stomach actually dives. Right in here, it kind of dives. That's where it's going to become the esophagus. And again, if I go through the mouth, I can confirm this. If I go straight back, the probe actually goes into, right there you can see it, there's the tip of my probe, into the stomach. So you want to do that. You want to probe these spaces out and confirm that you are in the right structure. So that's going to be the stomach. The stomach then leads into an intestine. And the intestine is going to coil around a little bit and ultimately we're going to pick it up right here. Now before we do that, we are going to see some projections. Some finger-like projections. There's one right there. There should be another one right there. And you'll get a couple of these finger-like projections. These are the gastric cica. The gastric cica. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and remove this. So I'm going to get in there with my probe, get the probe underneath that a little bit, loosen it up, and I'm going to go in there right where it enters, where it, where it becomes the esophagus. And I want to get in there and I want to cut that. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to remove this intestinal, this whole digestive tract. I'm going to go ahead and gently remove that. And there we go. And I'm going to cut the intestine right there. And I'm going to remove that. And we're going to take a little bit of a look at this. All right, you want to go through this a little bit. And we'll see if we can see the coils of intestine. So again, this is your stomach right here. You see the intestine begin to leave there. And it's going to coil. Usually it coils back and forth a little bit. Sometimes you can visualize that and sometimes you can't. So let's see. There we go. And just kind of open this up a little bit. And you can see the intestine sort of coil around. There you can see it right there. The intestine goes down, around. I see it coming back up. There it is. And that's where I actually cut it. So try to identify that. Try to follow the entire intestine all the way around to where you cut it. Part of dissection is exploring and following structures and seeing where they go and tracing them out. It's not just about identifying structures. So let's move that out of the way after we complete that. And we'll go back in here again. The last thing, let's see, there's a little piece of the liver right there. Let's see if there's anything else we want to go in and explore here. And I think that is going to be it. What you can do is you can come in here, try to remove some of this very gently. Let me actually try to, to get rid of this other uh, gonad here. And I'm going to gently try to pull it out. This is glandular tissue, so it tends to be very soft and break apart easily. And I'm trying to get in here so I can see the urinary bladder. Now I'm going to go, let's see, we've got the anus here. Here is the urogenital opening. And I'm going to go in there and I'm going to try to find the urinary bladder. And I'm inside it right there. You can sort of see right there. There's a little bit of a pouch. The probe is in it right there. That's going to be the, and I'm going to actually go through it right there. 
That was all urinary bladder. And that's going to be it for the perch dissection.